Why don't you go ahead and make an opening statement, Coach, we'll go from there. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're just uh, really appreciative of the opportunity to be here and be a part of this. Um, I said it to the media earlier, I think this is maybe one of the most exciting Division II places in America to play, uh, to be a part of uh, an outstanding environment. Um, things are done first class here. This is, uh, we, we've played a lot of Division I opponents in my time at Florida Tech, and, and I played at a small, low, low major Division I program. Uh, and I can tell you what, this is as Division I, uh, in the room we're sitting in right now. Everything about this place is uh, certainly as good as many, many mid-major Division I programs in the country. Uh, there was a Division I crowd at the game tonight. There was a Division I atmosphere at the game tonight. And I think uh, the fans here were treated to a Division I caliber of two great basketball teams going head to head. Late run by UH in the first half, how did that affect your club? I mean, I, I thought it was, a, it was a, you know, it was a, one of those things like two heavyweight boxers. Um, you know, they're the champions of their league, we're the champions of our league, and, and it looked like two champions going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of a ring with a lot of people. Uh, you, you might have mistaken, you could have thought we were in Las Vegas, and uh, you had two heavyweight champions going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, you know, there was, it, basketball's a game of runs. Um, even though they made that run, look at, you know, we bounced back in the second half and, and we fought back, we ran at them, they'd run at us, we'd run at them, they'd run at us. Uh, you know, th these are two teams with a lot of, i got two great players sitting next to me. Uh, and, and, you know, this has been a special basketball team for us this year at Florida Tech, as I'm sure Lenny feels about his team here at Huntsville. Uh, we have the utmost respect for, for what he's done, uh, how he's built this program into a national powerhouse. Uh, the caliber of players they have, uh, and the class and dignity they play the game with. Um, just just tremendous, tremendous respect for this program, uh, the coach, and, and all the people, the peripheral people here that, that make this a great experience for fans uh, and a great place to come watch a college basketball game. Um, I, I thought, you know, they did some things really well. We did some things really well. We talked about keys to the game, and, and we met a few keys. Uh, we out-rebounded them. Uh, and I thought rebounding was a big key in the game. And, you know, we had 17 offensive rebounds. Uh, if you look at the second half of the game, um, you know, we took 40 shots in the second half. We limited UAH to 21 shots. Uh, we took 19 more shots. Uh, we had opportunities. We just couldn't get the ball to fall. And, you know, sometimes that's, that's what happens in college basketball. Some nights certain shots just don't fall. Uh, this guy sitting next to me, and not many nights in his career at Florida Tech. I've watched him uh, on ESPN earlier this year, knock down 10 threes in a row in one game. And tonight he goes 0 for 7 behind the arc. And it wasn't like every time he missed one, there was a hand in his face. We got some good looks out of our system. We just didn't make enough shots to win the game on the road against a good basketball team. Coach, you know, they're their balance is, is sort of what went out today. You said, you know, it's a game of runs, but when they made that close run, had three or four guys doing a little bit of everything. How, how difficult is it to defend when you know they've, you know, not relying on one or two guys? Uh, it is difficult. I mean, they had six players in double figures. We had four players in double figures. I think, uh, you know, neither team really relies on any one single person. Um, and, and their system is one that's it's like that. The system they run, uh, you know, is a really Princeton-type offensive system. That is a team system. You know, there's, there's not, you got to have the ball in this guy's hands to make things happen. It's a system generated around five guys. And, and all, everybody's got a role in the system. Everybody plays a part in the system. And all five guys at any moment in time are equally dangerous. Uh, so when you guard UAH, it's not so much about guarding any one player. It's about preparing to guard their system. Uh, and I think they, they run it very, very well. They execute their system very well. And, Lenny's done a great job of recruiting players that fit that system very well. For the players now, uh, is it Rollins and your lead coach that kind of run something similar? It is, yeah. That, we, you guys have guarded that. Uh, how, what's different about the way UH does it, either one of you guys? Well, um, from the years past, Rollins has been real good at running the office. This year they had a struggle year, but okay. I mean, UAH, they spread for real well, and all five guys can shoot. This year, Rollins, the, the big man, is really kind of shoot as well. but. Um, UA spreads the floor and all five guys can knock down three at any time. Um, you, know, you probably weren't aware of it, but UA started I believe, 0 for 7 from three. It's one of those deals when you're in a game like this, when you know both teams are high quality, that that, that run's going to 
maybe come because that's sort of what got them going there late in the first half. They missed the first seven, but how aware were you of that? By the way, they were shooting. Did you actually? I didn't know they missed the first seven. <laughs> well, I just mean, did you, were you? They weren't. It's one of those things where how much of it do you think was the way you were playing them defensively early on, or is it just a matter of not making I stuff? mean, we watch game film, we scout them, so we know most of their stuff. I mean, I felt like we was playing great defense in the beginning. Um, we got a little bit of tired, so I guess they took the opportunities and made shots. So, I mean, basically, I, I felt like we guarded them for the first 15 minutes well, and the last five minutes they can set the some shots. And, and, you know, I mean, we thought this would be a game. I mean, obviously, Lenny, um, you know, uh, has openly said he believes he's got the best backcourt in college basketball. Um, and, and, and I came in the game and I jokingly said in the locker room tonight, well, let's introduce him to Florida Tech because we think we got a pretty good one too with this guy, Simon Cummings, sitting next to me and the junior point guard for us, Julius Reed. And, you know, I thought both of those guys had, had good basketball games tonight. Um, but, you know, the guy sitting on this side of me has just been a stalwart throughout his career. Uh, and, and Derek, you know, he had a double-double tonight. Uh, I think he finished with uh, 19 points and 11 rebounds. And, you know, he's one of those undersized post players that just finds a way to get it done. Um, but, you know, I thought his play tonight was huge in keeping us in the game, giving us a chance to compete because Derek just made plays inside. And, and, and I can tell you the funny thing, we talk about the guards getting good looks. Our guards got good looks and shots just didn't go down. Same with UAH. When they missed those first seven shots, we were playing great D, but I'm sure that some of those shots were wide open too, and they just didn't go down. But that's the nature of a guard and, and shooting jump shots. But the nature of a big man, and this guy sitting next to me, his world is every time you touch the ball and try to get to the basket, you're probably going to get bumped. You're going to get pushed. You're going to get shoved. You're going to get hit, and you got to play through it. And he does as good a job of that as anybody I've ever coached in my 30 years on the sideline, both professionally and collegiately. This is one tough warrior sitting next to me. His 19 and 11 tonight, huge double-double. His 19 points was a game high. Nobody had 19 other than him. His 11 rebounds were a game high. And I think, you know, I know both of these seniors, but especially this guy. You know, his dad coached him when he was little. He's been playing AAU. He's from Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, just outside of Cincinnati. And all, all year he's been talking about getting to Highland Heights, Kentucky, going home. You know, having his entire school, his entire town come out to see him play. Um, and you ought to ask him how tough it was inside tonight because Lenny talks about his guards being the greatest backcourt in the country. He had to go through some pretty good tall trees how inside. How difficult it was that you got, cause when, when Campbell goes out or even maybe when Blaze is in the game as well, it's, those are two. I mean, those, all the bigs they had today, they're, they're physical, the rest let us play. I mean, those are probably some of the best bigs we played against this year. So it was, it was difficult, but I mean, Went both ways, so it was, it was good, good contest. Coach, you think that may be the difference in the game when you they got a two-headed monster, you know, with, with Blazy and, and, and uh, Zane, and those numbers they put together, they're oh, yeah. pretty impressive numbers. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of those. I mean, and, and Lenny said it before. You know, I think the first game against Benedict, mm -hmm. he credited Blazy coming off the bench being the key mm -hmm. to the victory over Benedict. Um, so you know, I mean, and, and I tell you, the two teams are so similar. I mean, we run different systems, but the two teams are so similar. Both teams defend really well. Both teams execute their systems really well. Uh, and I think both teams have been, you know, uh, tonight, uh, you know, we, you know we, we both play about an eight-man rotation, you know. Uh, we have five really quality starters. We have three good subs. And so there's a lot of similarities between Florida Tech and UAH. And, um, you know, tonight was one of those nights where, um, you know, well, hopefully we we make them work really hard. I know last night Benedict gave them a run for their money. I thought tonight we did, and you know I, I thought the 11 points that the game ended up being really wasn't indicative of how closely the game was played. Um, you know, and that's me hopefully taking some pride in, in that that we made them work really hard all night. And you know I I hope now personally I hope uh, Lenny Acuff and the Chargers go on to win the national championship because I'd like to say well at least the team that ended my season won it all. And believe me, if, if they continue to play as a unit, they continue to execute, to pass it well. I, one of the things that was shocking to me tonight is, you know, we only turned the ball over seven times tonight. Usually when that happens, you know, we're going we're gonna to get good looks, we're going to get shots, we're going to make shots. We just didn't make them, but, you know, we, we forced UAH into 14 turnovers. Um, you know, the, the player of the year in the Gulf South Conference against our defense had eight turnovers tonight. 
Um, so a lot of things that we wanted to, to accomplish, we did a big statistic that we believe we always have to do to win games. We tell these guys all the time, you know, you got to rebound. We did that. Um, but we said we need to shoot more free throws than the opposition. And tonight, that, that was never in our favor. Um, UAH shot 28 free throws. We shot 18. You know, the game's an 11-point game. They shoot 10 more free throws than us. We actually made more field goals than they did. We had 27 field goals. They had 26. They made more free throws. They made more threes. And then if you look at the intangibles again, where I'm proud of our guys, points in the paint. Florida Tech won 36-32. Points off turnovers, Florida Tech won 18-8. Second chance points, Florida Tech won 19-14. Fast break points, we won 6-2. The only one of the five intangibles won by UAH was bench scoring, 15-5. So in a lot of areas of the game, we competed toe-to-toe -to -toe like a heavyweight champion. This was a great basketball game. And, you know, I'm, I'm sad that we lost. But I'm also excited to be a part of something that, that I think was a very memorable, historic uh, NCAA South Regional semifinal here at UAH.